My brother, what's up, man? What's going on, man? How are you? Always a good day, brother. Always Brandon. I see it. I love yeah. it. Thank you, you for joining it. me today, man. Thank you for joining me on last second notice. I appreciate you. Always ready. No, wor no worries, man. My pleasure, man. Thank you so much for having me. You know, I've been taking a look, you know, more into your social media outlets and, you know, I really love what you're doing within your space. And I love that you're out there serving, helping people get their name out there, get their brand out there. So I can appreciate that, man. I love what you're doing. Thank you. Thank you. I want to ask you, man. Um, I'm very impressed by you. You know, uh, Ryan, uh, Ryan Serrance, uh, you know, a partner, Net Seekers, Brian Harris Stevens, now at 19 million in, in about listing deals already, already in the start of the year. Plenty of merch, merch from the hat, the podcast, the neighborhood talk show, um, the tips of the day. Like you're all over the place. You're heavy in branding. So what that basically means to me is that you had an entrepreneur mindset early on at some point that would propel you to do this because most people – in New York, and you know, not many people like us are crazy all over social media and branding. We're very quiet, a lot of people. So what I wanted to ask you is, before all this got into play, um, I want to backtrack a little bit. Most people know you from Million Dollar Listing, Fox, I was an American Dream, you were online, you know, a lot of big shows. And you were right next to Ryan Serrant, but I can't say you were a shadow because you were louder than him. <laughs> you were more mm -hmm. colorful out there. So I wanted to ask you, one, how did you get working with Ryan? That's number one. The second thing is, what was it like working with him? Uh, first of all, I've been an entrepreneur since I'm 19 years old. And so I've been in real estate for over 20 years. Uh, today, I own and operate about 125 rental units in retail. And, uh, you know, just about five, six years ago, I had a property management company. I was going through a hard time. I really didn't didn't enjoy what I was doing anymore. And I really wanted to, you know, change the quality of my life. I was overweight and every day was bad news. I was in an office about <laughs> half the size of this one right here with a, you know, part-time uh, bookkeeper. And so, I don't know, I just woke up one day, Lorenzo, and I told myself, Enzo, forgive me. Um, you know, nothing in my life is going to change unless I make a change. And uh, I just woke up one day and I, and I decided I'm going to lose 110 pounds. I did that in 11 months. I gave the property management over to family. Man. And then I decided sure. to dive into luxury real estate full time. How I got hooked up with Ryan was it's a crazy story, but there's this kid named Brian. Uh, who Ryan, Ryan. To, <laughs> yeah. There's a kid named Brian who wanted to live in a building that I, um, that I co-own. And uh, I met him, and he's a really nice guy, and I was going through this transition of wanting to get out of property management and go full-time brokerage. And uh, he really liked an apartment in my building. So I got to know this guy. He's talking about nest seekers at the time where I was formerly. And he's like, it's a great company. You should come in and meet with them. And, uh, and I did. And, you know, I started working out of Fifth <laughs> Avenue. I had a lot of success very quickly. And that same kid, Brian, that I helped out with an apartment called me uh, shortly after. And he said, look, Ryan Serhan needs to raise a couple million for one of his clients. I didn't know Ryan. I wasn't planning on working on a team. I already had some success on my own. So I said, set up a lunch. I have a money guy. Mm -hmm. So we end up sitting down for lunch. Ryan Serhan uh, is telling me about a new development that he got off of Fifth Avenue. Coincidentally, I sold that building wow. to his client. And he's wow. like, how much did you sell it for? I was like, ten million two seventy five at a thirty day exclusive. I sold, I sold it under thirty days. And he's oh. like, well, how's my client supposed to make money? I was like, I don't give a fuck. It's on my client. <laughs> and so, long story short, you know, he invited me over to his office uh, about a week or two later and uh, asked me to join his team, and uh, and I did. And I thought it was a good education. It was a good way to learn from sure. the best, kind sure. of get an idea of what he was doing. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, I got more volume than I would have if I had waited and done it by myself. And, and uh, it, was a, it was a good opportunity for me. And I took it and, and I ran with it. And I'm glad I did. It was, a good, it was a good thing. What's it like working with him? What are his demands daily? Like, how is he in general? Is he, like, on you every day? Like, what's it like? Hey, Liz. No, you know, nothing like that at all. Because I can't say that, you know, today he's got 64 members. When I joined, there was 12, I was the 12th member. So I can't say or speak for anyone else on the team or that was on the team. All I can do is speak mm -hmm. for myself. At that sure. point, I have already been established in business. Mm -hmm. I carried myself a certain way. So I took most of my deals, like 99% mm -hmm. of them, from beginning to end. So he really didn't have wow. uh, too anything. much contact that he needed to do because I was experienced and I knew what I was doing. And he wow. could leverage me for that very reason, right? Okay. Okay. So that's it, you know? That's good, man. A lot of people in the industry don't have that self-starter thing. They don't have that in their mind. and. They need their hands held a lot, and it's a tough thing, man. But I think that 
you did the right thing by working with somebody which has had a big name, get you around a little bit more, but you worked hard, almost as hard, if not harder than him. So you, you knew what you had and you said, I need to do way more. You know what, Enzo, I'll tell you the best thing about him. I think the best quality that he brings <laughs> to the table is the fact that I don't think that there's many people that work harder than him. So one compliment that I will always give him is how hard and dedicated he works. There's nobody that works harder than that mm -hmm. guy. He's very disciplined. He has very good habits and he works very hard. Unbelievable. So what ended up leaving from Nest Seekers? You, you ended up stopped working with Nest Seekers. You went your own way, still in the same firm, mm -hmm. Nest Seekers. You're still there, but you're no longer part of Ryan's team. Mm -hmm. What made that change? And then all of a sudden you jumped to Brown Harris Stevens. I'm just curious well, about look, the mindset of this. No worries. Again, I've been an entrepreneur since I'm 19 years old. Okay. So in my time, I've opened up seven car washes in South Florida. I've mm -hmm. done short sales. I've bought and sold real estate. I hold real estate. I had a property wow. management company. My experience with Ryan was what it was. It was an experience. Sure. I went there to learn. But at the end of the day, my strategy, my exit was always going to be to have this, to have my own team, the NASI team. And so my goal when I was in Nest Seekers and I stayed, I built out a team. And what I realized was the things that initially attracted me to Nest Seekers, and I don't want to talk about the company at all um, because they're good people and, uh, you know, they That's gave me a good opportunity to grow my business there. But, you know, the truth was the things that I was attracted to going there weren't the same things that I was attracted to when I was leaving. And so mm -hmm. I really started taking my business very serious and I needed to have the courage. kind of support. No, not the courage. I always had courage. No, courage within you. Courage within you. That takes balls mm -hmm. to make moves, though. So. The, the courage has always been there. You know, my dad told me when I was a kid, listen, man, he told me, don't ever be a nine to five man. He said, whatever you do, be the best of what you do. I don't knock anyone that has a J-O-B, yeah. okay? To me, yeah. that's an acronym for just over broke. That's what my okay? friend says in Cali. <laughs> but, I'm not, but I'm not trying to live that life. You know, sure. I've been an entrepreneur. I'm a yep. business person. Yep. And uh, I don't like anybody for <laughs> the stealing over my head. And no one ever will. Good. So right now, Brown Harris Stevens, I mean, you're on another level right now. I'm curious to know what your mindset is. Um, what, are you, what are you doing? Online, you're branding yourself a lot. You're showing people your personality. You're giving away a ton of free information for new agents, which is very needed because a lot of agents in New York are never trained. They're always throwing in their 37,000 agents in Manhattan, 56, 57,000 in uh, New York. It's hard. So I appreciate what you're doing with the podcast, Nasty's Neighborhood, you know, the merch, the tips of the day. But what are you doing to attract leads? to attract clients and to target your posts so they hit the right people? Well, look, you know, for me, I've been in sales driven businesses all my life. So for <clears> me, <throat> my biggest number one goal, which is, you know, something I put out in my opinion videos every day is that you have to have seven to nine lead generating sources. For me, you know, my biggest source is really my circle of influence, my sphere of influence. So when I first got into this business, and so, yeah, you know, yeah. you'll hear this saying this all the time, like, Every single day, I, I went onto my LinkedIn. I made appointments for coffee, breakfast, coffee, lunch, coffee, dinner, cocktails, after hours. And I made sure that I was in front of people that knew me, that loved me, that cared about yeah. me, that supported me. And naturally, yeah. when they said, what are you doing? I'd have my 60-second elevator pitch <laughs> ready to go. But it wasn't about the business. You know, it was sure. about just cultivating and reconnecting with people that love me sure. and then asking them for help. I always ask for help. Every single day that I work, I ask for help. My other biggest lead generating source is after I close a deal, I give my seller or buyer a call and I invite myself to their office and I ask them how the service was. They tell me it was great. And then I, yeah. And then I asked them, I said, listen, did you like my service? Yeah, Danny, we love your service. Are you kidding me? Will you help me? Sure. How can I help you? Can you introduce me to five of your friends that may need real estate related services? Sure, Danny, but I don't have five friends that need it. Well, if you had five friends that needed it, who would they be? And then I shut the fuck up. And then they come up with a list of five people. And then once they have those five people, I then ask them to call Love those it. five people and tell them the story of the experience that they had with me. Because facts sure. tell a story sell, right? Sure. So at the end of the day, when I call the, their clients who are their friends or their family, mm -hmm. and I give them a call, it's not like I'm winning them over. I'm just asking them if I can help them now. You're staying fresh. In it. I'll tell you what, man. You hustle more than most people that I know in New York that have been there a while. And by the way, my social media, just to, just to take this further, like the content I put out there because I feel like it's my responsibility to serve people. I feel like the better that, you know, the more content I put out there, the more I help people make money, the more, you know, agents are getting a better grasp on what this business is and how to do it, the more it's going to give us a good name as a whole community. Right. As a, so as a community. Not, yeah. Yeah. I'm not out here to get validation. I'm not trying to get famous. The podcast that I do with all these 
massively successful people that aren't all real estate related. And so my people that do follow me, that have an interest in my life, can have sure. an aha moment. Yeah, of what's going on. But I think another way, too, you're also practicing, man. It makes you a better talker. It makes you more smart. It makes you more keen to know what's going on. So you're doing yourself a service as well as everybody else by actually being out there. You don't win when you stay inside. You got to get out there. Yeah, I mean, Big also, thing. like, you know, I spent two years of my life traveling the country <clears throat> speaking in front of rooms in Florida, mm -hmm. Chicago, Salt Lake City, Utah, Arizona. So, you know, that's that's part of the experience. That's something that I like to do. You know, something mm -hmm. I like to do is really get in front of people, inspire them, motivate them, help them, and just fucking keep them moving. Like, I'm not trying to say that I'm a Gary Vee or a Tony Robbins. I'm not saying that <laughs> in any shape way or form, and I don't want to be. I just want to be a leader that says, hey, look, if you want to do it, this is how you do it. It's how you That's do it. it, and I appreciate that. And let me ask you this. Why do you not have a, a big team in New York? You said you like to stay solo sometimes, maybe one or two people. You had a team prior, but you have a different way of working. Well, I made a big that. mistake because when I first, when I first <clears throat> left, what I did was I had built communities of real estate investors throughout the country. And so I used that template towards building my real estate brokerage team, which was a mistake. And I tell people that all the time. So now – Instead, I had seven people. I fired four of them. I have three now, okay? Okay. Uh, the reason why is the people who have the right attitude, that get it, that are hungry, that are aggressive, like I can teach you all the systems and tools and how to be successful. I can't teach you how to fucking be hungry, okay? So if you have the right attitude and you have all the systems and tools and you're hungry, the two people yeah. that I have, three total with me, do more work than the seven people that I had. <laughs> I can't carry dead wood. I tell people all the time, if you're coming to work for me, not for me, with me, I'm going to help you build your business. I'm not here to give you business. I'm not a fucking charity. And the problem was <laughs> I kept on acting as a, uh, uh, you know, uh, a charity. And, you know, there was resentment once I stopped. Yeah. And, and that was I, it. I, I applaud you on that. Um, what do you think about now in the industry, though? You know, with the, the mansion tax coming in, you know, the, the salt fee, uh, trying to cap the broker fee. What do you think real estate agents need to do to actually be, you know, more, more, you know, more viable out there so that they don't go away, you know, so that the state doesn't get rid of them and people don't get tired of them? What do you I don't think, think the I, you is? know, I mean, right now, I I, who's to say what's going to happen? The mansion tax has already been there, right? Any property, a million and over, you got to pay uh, 1%. Sure. So net share tax has never made it to the final revenue bill. So now they've decided to change the mansion tax rates based on sales price, right? So if you're a buyer right now, the most important thing you can do is use that as a bargaining chip to get it in contract and closed before July 1st when it's implemented. And if you're a seller and your property is going stale, it's best that you adjust your price, get it in contract and sold before July 1st when it's implemented. Tell about Listen, value is value, okay? I know what I bring to the table. I bring the fucking table, right? I know that when people work <laughs> with me, I'm a one-stop shop. Yeah. They're getting me. They're getting my team. They're getting my attorney. They're getting my mortgage broker. They're getting my um, title guy. And I've seen people get ripped off on fees. They're also getting my credit repair oh, yeah. guy. And all of my yeah. guys have worked together for five years. So you have to be responsible for what value you're bringing to the table. And you have to be responsible yep. for what makes you different than the rest. For these, you know, these, these other brokerages that are coming day and night, look, there's, we're always going to be needed. We're always going to be yeah. needed. And that's it. I don't focus on, I don't watch the news. You know, a lot of people watch CNN consistently, negative news. People watch Fox. No. I don't watch any of that shit. If you want to have a positive mental attitude and you want to feel good, then you got to buckle down. You got to work. You got to believe in yourself. And you got to do everything in your power to have knowledge and experience. And the only way that happens Love is it. by staying focused and working your fucking ass off. That's it. I, I, I feel the same way, man. And that's why I turn my social media into the same thing. I really try to drill it out there. And, uh, and I try to keep as much patience as I can because I know that eventually the tide will turn in my favor. You know, and eventually I will finally rise to levels, maybe le maybe levels close to where you're at one day, hopefully. I just know that what you have to do is just not quit and you got to be out there. And I think you're right. You can't teach people that. They either got it in them or they don't. Yeah, I mean, and look, in any business, you know, Babe Ruth, great <clears throat> quote, you can never be the person that never quits, man. You know, most people right. stop before they get to the finish line. But if you don't stop, right. you can't lose. And yeah, that's it. If it was easy, everyone would do it. It's not. It's work. It's sure. rolling up your sleeves, getting your knuckles going bloody, getting your knees straight, and going it. after it. That's it. So, at what point in making deals in real estate do you start investing in passive income or in other streams of income so you have money for the dry times? When is it well, wise? So you don't juggle too well, much. Well, it's funny because my life went the other direction. <laughs> I did it the opposite so. way, right? 
<laughs> um, I've always been a broker and I do own property and it is passive income, but I, I'm, I'm in brokerage because I'm a deal junkie. I do it because I want to, I get to, I love to, and I choose to. But the truth is you should always be looking for those opportunities. But if you're not at that level where you can do that, and so the most important thing is that you're feeding your pipeline, feeding your pipeline. Because the more you feed your pipeline, the more consistent your business is going to be, the sure. more money you're going to have come in, volume. and the more money you're going to have to roll over more into passive income yeah. properties, right? How many, how many people are you trying to contact a day to keep that volume going? Give a um, I don't, no, I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't roll like that. You know, I have my okay. business cards every day. I meet people every day. Again, I'm in front of people every day. I ask for help sure. every day. Sure. And I also take people's business cards. I rarely give out mine because <laughs> if you think about it, when you give out your business card, people just fucking put it in their pocket and throw it out. They don't even look they at do. it later. They so do. when I meet people, I take their card. And then as soon as I'm done meeting with them, I literally email them as I'm walking away from them, telling yeah. them it was a pleasure to meet with them. And when do you mm -hmm. want to get coffee, Tuesday or Thursday? So that right. way they can't say no. And what's your favorite social media right now? Facebook, Instagram, or LinkedIn, or Twitter, for that matter? Um, I mean, I love them all for different purposes, but honestly, okay. probably Instagram is my favorite because I feel like Instagram is like the open house party in high school. You know what I mean? I Everyone mean, is on, uh, is on there, Instagram. There. Yeah. So I spend a lot of time doing a lot of interviews now on other people's podcasts and Facebook lives, Instagram lives like yours. And, you know, I'm just trying to help as many people as I can, touch as many people Amen. as I can and, and just fucking do, you know, do whatever I can to brighten someone's day, man. Look, we just met, what, yeah. a month ago at the New York Realty Entrepreneur Mixer? <laughs> the mix, and I and, love that thing, yeah. You know, and we've we been are. talking a little bit, and now oh, here we man. are, you know? I don't yeah. say no to people. No, and I love I that about you, man. I love that about you. I, I'm so grateful for that, man. I see, see many more meetings coming up in the future, many more things starting to happen. Um, sure. What is, uh, if you could give anybody uh, advice, you know, there's a lot, a lot of this is a lot for new agents that are out there. It's one big thing I always do is press new agents. I mentor a lot of them. Um, people that are on the, on the verge of saying, you know, I'm not enough. You know, I don't have the voice. I don't have the look. I don't, I don't have the knowledge. No one will teach me. And you're in New York. And you know how New York is probably the hardest real estate in the entire world. I have, I have friends and brokers in different states. They're killing it. They're, their proximity is easier. They walk into an open house. There's two people, two brokers in the open house. I go to an open house in New York. There's 44 brokers. And I'm like, holy cow. So the, the odds are against you as an agent. What advice do you have for somebody out there that is like, I think I'm just not made for the industry? If they think that, then they're probably right. Mm. Uh, that's number one. Number two, if they think they're right for the industry, then I would say the most important thing more than everything is two things. Number one, find yourself a mentor. Okay, mm -hmm. Find yourself a team. Find yourself somebody that's going to take a genuine interest in you Correct. and that wants to see you successful and that doesn't want to use you or leverage you for time and spit you yep. up and throw you out. That's number one. Yeah. It's very hard to find. But Appreciate when, you find that. when you find them, you treat them like royalty. The second yep. thing I would say is whatever you're making a year right now, you have to have that put away in the bank. So that way you're never focusing and worrying about money while you're going through your process and building your business because you want to mm -hmm. operate at a peak, not a valley. Those are the two main things I would say. Two Most main things important. over there. And, and how long is the success in, in New York? I know it could happen anytime. Is it a five-year kind of run? Is it two years? Is it luck, luck of the lottery? I think You've it all this. comes down. I think it all comes down to the individual. I mean, I've seen people make money quickly and I've seen people, you know, where it takes them a year to two years. Like for me, mm -hmm. when I jumped in full-time luxury real estate, I think within four months, uh, and again, not to impress you, but to impress upon you, I think I grossed <laughs> just, just about 200,000 in commission my first four months. Holy so cow. everyone's different. And I'm also, you know, I'm a hustler mm -hmm. and not everyone's a hustler. Sure. Everyone works at their own pace. So I would say your business only pays you as hard as you work it. So if you come in of course. and you work it hard, you work it fast, then you'll get paid sooner. If you don't, so you, then you'll get paid later. Did you start off with a top brokerage name, something big? You start off with a, with a smaller boutique, something like No, unknown? dude, I started 20 years ago. I started with a small company called Best Apartment, sure. renting apartments. Best, okay, okay. Then that led me to commercial rentals, then commercial okay. leases, then retail, then sure, I started buildings. Sure. Then I moved to New York. Dude, I, I had no idea what I wanted to do. I, I realized <laughs> it took me almost a you lifetime to realize this is what I wanted to do because I tried so many things. But real really? estate was always the constant. Now, mm -hmm. I can't imagine doing my life and not doing real estate. It's crazy. Well, God bless you, man, on all parts, man. Um, I got one more good question for you because I know you got a lot of meetings. And you're always doing, <laughs> I never know when you're doing the mixer thing because you're always <laughs> – it seems like you pop up in my feed. Danny's at the mixer. I'm like, he was just at the mixer last night. He's at another one, another one. <laughs> and it's just crazy. So – um, I guess the uh, the question uh, is, is is right now, 
you have a goal out there. You see something in New York. I know you see a building. I know you see something. As an entrepreneur, entrepreneurs always dream big. You know, I, I remember I interviewed Tyrese one time, the singer, and he told me, he goes, dream very big. He goes, dream big as hell because eventually your bank account will catch up to your dreams. Don't aim low. Aim high and you'll come in pretty high. So what building, what area, what type of real estate in New York do you feel is going to be your next great, so to say, quote unquote, real estate that you're going after? That you feel uh, that you want. I mean, to be honest with you, I own like six multifamily buildings that I co-own mm -hmm. from Soho up to Washington Heights. And so I think, look, I'm 40 years old. My father's about 77, 78. <laughs> His yeah. generation was 96th Street and South. Okay? Wow. Our generation, my generation on the street for myself, I believe is 96th Street and North. So oh. when I started going in 2011, I started going into Washington Heights and, and Central Harlem and West Harlem. Things I started that people buying ignore. over there. Yeah, yeah, people that I know that were in my circle were like, you're fucking okay. crazy. And the truth is, is like things that, you know, we were buying for 10, 11, 12 caps are now spitting out 15, 16. So all those people savage. can fuck off. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> my feelings Come are it's going to be uptown and it's going to be moving north. Um, the things that I like to look at are corner <coughs> elevator buildings. Sure. I like retail as long as it's a dry space in the anchor. Um, yep. And I look for clean buildings that you can improve that you can make it nicer, that are close to churches, that are close to schools, that in some cases close to the water. And uh, that's, and that's, really what, I, that's what I look for. Because I'm not a seller. Because when I buy, yeah. I want to hold. No, you're absolutely right, man. I, I think you're thinking the right thing. Because Ty Lopez, Mark Cuban, Gary V, a lot of them, they all say the same thing. They go, they go, stop going after where everybody's going. You know, if everybody's going this way, it's a big red flag to run the opposite direction. And you probably would have more success. And you probably wouldn't know who you really are as a person, where your niche is if you actually went after and did the hard work and fell on your ass and got punched in the face, you, de you actually become who you're supposed to be by working for it. I, I saw hardcore re represent that and, uh, and uh, respect that so much, man. Thank you, bro. Thank yeah. you. And um, so quick question is, man, if you were going to hire someone for your team, if you really <laughs> wanted to do that, because, you know, you say, where should I go, Angel? Where should I go? Every fucking I can, day, man. You have no idea. Due diligence. Look at the transaction. Come with walk around. Go interview interview the broker that's gonna interview you. Um, but if you were gonna hire somebody and you needed people to be in the best shape of their life, what would you tell them? Like this is how you probably should be behaving already. Like, if you're ready for this, this is what you, how you should be ready. I'll tell you what I would be looking for. What I would be looking for is somebody with at least two and a half to three years of sales experience in New York City. I'd be looking for someone that already has an established book of business. I'd be looking for someone who's well-dressed. I'd be looking to someone who could immediately connect with me, immediately, for, upon meeting them. I, want, I, would, I would want to see that hunger. I'd want to see that ability and that art of being able to be a master communicator right off the bat. And uh, I'd want to see somebody who's hungry and somebody who could take action without being told what to do. That's what I look for. So anybody watching this now or watching it later on in the replay, get your ass out there and go to work. <laughs> go to work. Go to fucking work. And don't go to bed. And, you know, and, and when you show up with red eyes because you didn't sleep, Danny Nasty will hire you when you're exhausted. Yeah. You know, you did so by work. the way, I do, I do have that <laughs> show coming out. If you don't, do you mind if I give a couple plugs? No, knock it out. Go ahead, man. All right, man. So you guys can find long me you, at long you give me a hat, on bro. Give me a hat. You got it. I got a hat for you. You guys can follow me at DNassi on Instagram. Um, I am dropping a new show on YouTube. If you want to subscribe there, uh, Danny Nassi, it's going to call. It's going to be called Nassi's Neighborhood. Uh, the first episode is going to drop soon. You can find me on Spotify or iTunes, Danny Nassi Podcast. And if you just go to DannyNassi.com, you can find me on any of my social media outlets there. All right. I love it. You guys, check him out. Follow him uh, at D-N-A-S-S-I right here on the gram. And it's the same name, right? Synchronized on all of your social medias? Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. Okay. But you know what I want to say to you, man? Um, first of all, I sure. want to thank you so much for having me. Like, I feel like it's such an honor to be here on your show. And I love, Dude, again, I'm going to say I'm this honored, over. <laughs> I just love what you're doing in your space. Thank I you. love that you're serving people and I love the message that you're putting out there Thank you. because it's so honest, it's genuine, it's real. I love the questions you ask for the newer agents and I can tell that you sure. genuinely care and you want to learn. And 
you know, it's up to people like you and me to do everything we can to lift other people up. And I just Appreciate see you that, doing man. that. And I have a lot of respect for you. And I just want to thank you again for having me. No, thank you, bro. You know what? Maybe hopefully in the future, we'll have our own sub. We'll be on stage together at some point, man. And we'll take over, bro. Hey, listen, man, you're going to be better. I promise. Just be you. <laughs> be authentically yourself. Trying, bro. Have a good heart. Just be honest. And the rest thank will you. take care of itself. Just don't be a scumbag. There's a lot of scumbags out there. That's I don't what makes know how us to different. do it. I've been on this earth 40 years. I've been on this. I've been on this earth 40 years eating shit. That's all I know what to eat. I keep going. And all yeah. I know is, and I told this to Ricky Carruth in the last interview, I said, there's only two things you can leave people or leave this world in general. It's a system, like a lesson, a system that they can use and work with or the way that you made them feel. Nobody remembers the stuff that I've done for them or whatever, but they'll be like, Enzo, good guy, good heart, hard work. I like him. I trust him. That gives me the warm foot in the door. Now, all I have to work on, I think what anybody else out there is bringing more value to the yeah. table so we can have some business to talk about. You know? And I'll tell you what, there's no amount of money in the world that can buy you being liked and being likable and people want to be around you and trusting you. So you're fucking killing it. And it starts there, man. Thank, so thank you, you so much for having me, man. I'll thank see you, you soon, buddy. You. All right. I'll see you at the next mixer. I appreciate you. All right, man. Thanks, see you, brother. Thank Take you. care, buddy. Bye-bye.